Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be programming a scenario that involves a conveyor that can run forward or reverse. So we're going to be using the online simulator plcfiddle.com just like we have in, in the other examples or in the other videos. If you haven't seen the other videos, I'll drop a link that back to the first one in the description below. So we're going to stay with our naming convention of I for input. So we, we need a couple buttons. We need a forward push button. It's going to be Boolean. It's on or off. Input 2. We need a reverse push button. And we need a stop push button. Alright, for our outputs, output 1, O for output, we need, let's say run motor forward, and then output 2, O2, say run motor reverse, and then let's, let's create some memory, some internal memory to use, we'll say, uh, we'll just say forward memory. And let's do the same for reverse. We'll do reverse memory. There we go. Alright, we can go ahead and get some contacts going here. So, as always, more than one way to do it. But we'll start, we'll kind of walk through it. We'll build it out as we go. So, press the forward button. We cut the forward memory on. We press the reverse button. We cut the reverse memory on. And then we'll have the stop button. Stop both of them. So we're just going to drop a little branch down here on this rung. We'll move this unlatch inside there just like that. All right, so right there, the forward button cuts on the forward memory. Down here, the stop button will unlatch it. The reverse button will latch the reverse memory, and that stop button will unlatch it. So let's let's walk through that right quick. Let's test it. I'm gonna cut forward on. So I press the forward button. See how our forward memory's on. If I stop it, it should go off. Then we press the reverse button. The reverse memory comes on. If I press the stop button, it should go off. So let's make those memories cut on the actual motor. So we'll make the forward memory cut on the forward output. And we'll make that reverse memory cut on the reverse output. Right there. So let's cut the forward button on. And we can see that the actual O output, this is a discrete output, that's going to represent a screw on the hardware, on the PLC rack somewhere that actually has voltage applied to it. So it's this will be actually connected to like a relay that's a motor starter or something like that. Alright, then we can stop it. And then the same thing for reverse. We've got the reverse button on. Our motor's going to run until we press the stop button. Now one thing, so that that's most of the scenario, that's what we said we were going to do. One topic that I want to bring up is if this is one motor that can go either direction, the way we have it programmed right now, it can run, or the outputs for forward and reverse can come on at the same time. And that's not good for the motor, right? It can't run both directions at the same time. So we need to do something so that only one of these outputs can come on at a time. So let me press stop, stop them. And the way that we solve this problem, so we're gonna drop a normally closed contact in each one of these memory rungs. And for the forward memory coil, I'm going to interlock it with the reverse memory. And for the reverse memory, I'm gonna interlock it with the forward memory. So right here, Whoever comes on first, forward or reverse, 
is going to win. So let's hit forward first. See the, the reverse memory is off. So when we press this button, the logic can flow right through it and it's going to it's going to cut our forward memory on. See how it's latched there? I can let off the button. Now notice our latch M1 forward memory is on. So this M1 forward memory normally closed contact is, is false now. So when I hit this reverse push button, even though the button's on, this normally closed contact from that forward memory there is blocking the logic flow. So reverse cannot happen now. So our output for our forward is on. It doesn't matter how many times we hit our reverse button. It is not going to go reverse until we press the stop button. All right. Now that the motor stopped, now we can cut reverse on. See our motors down here running in reverse. But when I press forward, this normally closed contact of this reverse memory is blocking it, right? So the logic can only float it right there. It can't go any further. So it same thing doesn't matter how many times I press forward it's not going to pass this normally closed contact and it's going to run reverse until I hit the stop push button then it'll stop it so that's that scenario solved and then it brings up this topic of interlocking that you can see a lot in programming a lot of times you'll have different memories or different controls whatever that you only want one of them to happen at a time and that's a nice clean way to, to do that is um, interlocking them just like that so that's all for today's video guys please comment down below and, and let me know if you're liking the videos if you're liking this series again if you have a scenario that, that you're working on just tell me what it is in the comments and I'll I'll program it I'll do a video on it so please subscribe so you can see the um the rest of my videos that are coming out and thank you and bye.